Hi, welcome to Hard Boiled Synthesis, Lecture 5, technically 4.5 because it's just a follow-up from Lecture 4. I got some results. I screened, rescreened the candidates and got their PDFs, and I'm really surprised by what I got here. This is actually quite remarkable. I don't think I've ever had it so easy in terms of downloading uh, PDFs. Um, and let me just uh, throw on the spoiler, um, the majority of studies were easily accessible. It's quite remarkable. Um, here's a time-lapse video of me uh, finding all the PDFs, which was exciting to do. It lasted about an hour or so. I don't feel like you guys need to watch me um, download the PDFs for an hour. But I got some interesting results, so let's quickly summarize these things. Let me just take a, a, an aside right now to talk about um, why I did this. I, I really wanted to uh, find out how many of these studies were uh, open access or just like directly downloadable without uh, paywalls. This was kind of a goofy experiment. Uh, and it was neat. It was neat. I'd say the majority of studies, well, I got the actual numbers, I'll tell you that later, but uh, were downloadable, downloadable directly. And um, I did it manually, which is, you know, takes time. You're clicking, you're looking for the PDFs visually to try to download. Uh, there's certainly many uh, more like semi-automated tools to download PDFs. If you use Zotero, for example, there's like a button you could press. It tries to retrieve the PDF, the full text for you um, automatically. There's some uh, packages in R that try to do the same thing too. My experience with, say for example, Metagear is, it's not totally awesome at downloading consistently the PDFs. And that's because a lot of the searches um, use DOIs, right? With DOIs just like redirects you to the publisher web page. And then you have to kind of like uh, do a, a quick scrape of the web page to identify the PDF embedded somewhere in it. And a lot of these uh, giant publishers like Elsevier, um, they are super sneaky in the way they embed their PDFs, you know, behind multiple redirects and cookies. And ours not really kind of set up to do all those crazy acrobatics to try to retrieve a file. Um, and so again, like Metagear could, is like maybe 30% good at downloading uh, files. If the publisher is not transparent in the way they keep the PDF, it's difficult to find. And that's why I call these ad hoc because every there's a custom search for each publisher. If you look into the code of Metagear, there's like a list of maybe 30 publishers where there's like a rigid script meant to try to find these things. And if the publisher changes the way the HTML is um, organized for their journals, it breaks the search. That's that's the disadvantage of an ad hoc search is that it's not very flexible when the publisher changes the website, which happens all the time. And it makes a headache for the developer to um, create tools to automate the extractions of uh, studies because you all, it's a cat and mouse race with the publishers to try to uh, get the PDFs. Um, all right, so that was kind of a weird aside. Um, let's talk about the results <clears throat> from what I found is uh, again quite remarkable out of the 66 studies that i initially identified as candidates ooh, 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 i don't have it written on my paper 27 contain numerical data useful for the meta-analysis numerical data where there's an experiment where they test either deet or bare arm versus catnip i mean i did not expect there to be so many studies i got a lot of work ahead of me for some reason, I thought there'd be like 10 studies on this, but there's 30. And if there's 30, that probably means there's 40 or 50 out there that could potentially contain useful data for the project. It's exciting. I mean, the more studies you have, the more opportunities you also have in um, getting a uh, robust analysis, but also if you want to test moderators. 
So for example, things that could uh, change the outcome of the study. For example, something that came up already was a study that uses a cocktail of many compounds, which includes catnip, uh, versus just straight up a natural uh, oil, natural uh, derived plant compound of catnip. Um, and so that could potentially impact the variability associated with the repellency test. But okay, out of the 27 studies found, 21, I could just download directly off Google within the first five, 10 um, hits off a of Google search, there was a PDF um, available to download, either through, say, for example, a USDA website or um, real open access of the journals. I was really excited that a lot of these uh, medical entomology-like journals um, had open access to their papers. That's fantastic. But also six or seven of them were available on ResearchGate. So the authors themselves presented the PDF of their study. And so really, I only had to retrieve four studies using my uh, library account. And then there's two other studies, two additional studies, which I was not able to get. Uh, they were both book chapters. And so I made requests to get a copy of the chapters. We'll see how that goes. So overall, I'm feeling really optimistic about this. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, and many, many studies to synthesize now, which is a lot of going to be a lot of work. Um, on top of that, I uh, was able to find a bunch of studies that are actually useful in writing up the paper. A uh, few of those studies were actually looking at the mechanism, mechanisms behind why catnip is has repellency effects on mosquitoes, where they actually do some physiology, um, neurological, sensory experiments to see what gets activated, what, what gets, um, I don't know how you call it, disactivated because of uh, the repellent. So I mean, there's like uh, really some good science where we could formulate a nice research project. So that's, that's it. That's all I got to summarize uh, for this um, really short lecture, you know, an extension of lecture four. Um, 27 studies, oh boy. That's going to be a lot of work to extract those data. And so this, it's exciting and I will continue this tomorrow. We're going to start extracting data tomorrow. So, all right, let's uh, take it easy for a while. I'll see you tomorrow.